Hey there, podcast family. Sean Tabbitt here. After a long hiatus, Randy Kay and I are back today for a special episode of Two Christian Dudes. Earlier today, we sat down with writer and director Stephen Gray to talk about his brand new film, After Death, that is releasing in theaters this week. If you want to get tickets, head on over to angel.com forward slash after death and reserve your tickets for your local theater. Before we get to that interview, I'm going to share the trailer for Randy's and my new book. I know some of you have seen the trailer that I made for Near Death Experiences, but it turned out so darn cool. <laughs> I'm going to share that with you all again. So uh, in just a moment, I'm going to share that trailer, and then we will get on to the interview. We all have an appointment with death one day. But what happens when we cross over to the other side? Find out that and more in a brand new book by Randy Kay and Sean Tabbitt called Near Death Experiences, 101 short stories that will help you understand heaven, hell, and the afterlife. Available wherever great books are sold. Thanks for taking the time to watch the trailer for Near Death Experiences. If you haven't picked up your copy yet, head on over to realndestories.com. We got links there to retailers where you can pick up your very own copy. And without further ado, here is Randy's and my conversation with Stephen Gray. Enjoy. Welcome back to another episode of the Two Christian Dudes podcast. It has been a long time since you have seen Randy and me together in this venue, but we came out of our temporary retirement to bring you a wonderful interview. There's a great new film that is coming out this week called After Death. And we have the opportunity to sit down with the writer and director, Stephen Gray. So, Stephen, welcome to Two Christian Dudes. We're so excited to speak with you. I'm very excited to speak to you as well. Thanks for having me on. Well, my first question, I always love to get a bit of the backstory before we get into the meat of the interview. Did you always want to be a filmmaker when you grew up? How did you fall into this unique space? Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I, if I always knew that. I mean, obviously, films you know, had a big impact in my life you know, as a, as a child, you know, one of my first movie experiences with Jurassic Park, you know, I, I don't think I ever, ever thought that I would be, you know, entering, entering the space, but I've been a filmmaker for about 15 years now. Um, and most of my work has been in the commercial space a lot in Canada, sort of Canada. So a lot of commercials in Canada. Um, and yeah, this, this is my first, uh, first feature film. All right, Randy, over to you, sir. Well, Stephen, I know that I uh, that you had an, a personal experience within your own family that kind of led you to an interest in in the afterlife. Uh, tell us about that, please. Yeah. So, in 2012, uh, my brother-in-law Marco he was killed in, by a drunk driver, and um, that you know really challenged uh, us as a family. And then uh, it's, my, it's my wife's only sibling. And, you know, I've, I've known him for about 20 years and, and, uh, was very close to him. So, you know, seeing him here one moment and gone the next was really challenging. Um, uh, I just began to ask questions about the reality of life after, um, you know, I, I grew up in a, in a Christian home. I went to church all my life. Um, you know, I accepted Christ when I was 11 years old and, uh, but for whatever reason, 2012, it just, uh, was really shaky ground with my faith. And uh, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure you know, if I really believed in, in heaven. I wasn't sure if it was just wishful thinking. Um, so we got a helicopter flying by here. <laughs> We're hot here. Um, yeah, and so uh, basically, I kind of came upon these stories of people who had, you know, clinically died and had these experiences and came back uh, by recommendation. I had some friends and, and family that my mother-in-law actually was, you know, she had heard of these stories and she was, she's like, I think these will be a great comfort. And <clears throat> I'm not a big reader um, at first. And so, uh, you know, I, I confess I didn't, I didn't read the, the books at first that were recommended, but it was actually, it was an audio interview that I came across with this guy, Dr. Richard Eby. And he, he talked about, he had fallen two stories and his, his head had cracked open and the way he described what he experienced with such articulate detail and he went on about you know this whole experience you know walking with jesus and what his body form was like in 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 a spirit and all of that and i was like what on earth is this guy doing you know 
this is amazing. Like I've never heard any of this before. It caught, it just, it, it just, um, I don't know. It just, it caught my attention more than anything else had. And then I couldn't get enough. I read something like 30 books cover to cover. Um, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't get enough, you know, and then I watched everything I could about near death experiences. Um, but to me, there was something amazing about not just the individual stories, but sort of the layering of multiple stories, you know, th this many books is these many stories and they're from people from very different backgrounds. Um, and, and yet their experiences seem to overlap. And, uh, I found something really interesting about that. John, John Burke wrote this book, Imagine Heaven, uh, which I also read, you know, later, this is, uh, right before I kind of, uh, began, uh, telling these stories, you know, I thought he did a really good job of, of kind of doing that, um, putting it together from a high level, all of these accounts and how, and how they do overlap. And I, and I felt like that was, that's a perfect kind of roadmap for the film. So yeah, I, I went out and told, uh, one story to begin with, I told Captain Dale Black's story in a short doc called Discovering Heaven. Uh, he's a pilot who died in a plane crash, 1969, Burbank, California, with two other pilots. And, uh, you know, I wasn't sure what would become of it. Um, you know, if, if that's all that it ended up being, that's it's okay. Um, but I, I was hope, you know, always hoping to do a feature length. And uh, it caught the attention of, of some people. And I ended up connecting with uh, Jens and Jason of Cypher, Cypher Studios, who put out a beautiful film called The Heart of Man in 2017, which is, a, you know, is a cinematic uh, kind of retelling of the prodigal son story. And uh, once I saw that, I was like, I think these guys, you know, they're doing a really complicated, heavy subject in a really beautiful, meaningful, meaningful way. And I, th I thought it was very similar to the approach that I wanted to do with, with the idea of this film. And so I connected with them and the rest is history. But I've worked on this film now for, you know, about seven years. It's a, it's a, it's a long time. And in terms of the people that you chose to have be a part of the film, uh, you have an interesting range. You know, some of them have very positive heaven experiences. You know, Howard Storm has what we might call in part a disturbing or distressing NDE. So I feel like you really covered uh, a, a broad range. Um, in, in terms of who you selected, the folks you decided to put in the film, uh, talk to us a little bit about that that rationale, that process for you. Yeah, so I, was, I kind of had two criteria uh, in, in the selection of the, the people we included. Um, one of them was, uh, for the skeptic, uh, and our, our two producers are, are a lot more skeptical than I was. You know, I'm multiple years into this, became convinced along the way that these are real, but the two producers were not convinced. And it was helpful, helpful to have that going in and, uh, and kind of, kind of having that tension, uh, as we went into it. But one of them, one of them would be that there had to be a lot of evidence surrounding their, you know, their death. Um, so it's one, one thing to kind of believe, uh, you know, what, what they, saw an experience and some of that could be corroborated but another thing entirely also to you know what kind of evidence around it you know the way they died so um and you know there's so many different near-death experiences out there but we kind of just wanted to keep the skeptic in mind which is a big kind of audience member we, we, we felt to to have their voice in the film so if there's eyewitnesses if there's you know doctors if there's medical transcriptions or doctor's notes or an investigation or something into into what happened at least to kind of corroborate. So that was one element. Another one was uh, we were kind of finding, trying to find people that potentially had a lot to lose in telling their story. Um, you know, many of the people that are in our film, in the professions that they're in, did have a lot to lose in telling their story. Howard Storm, who you just mentioned, is I think one of the one of the you know stories where he he stood to lose the most. Um, he was an atheist uh, professor you know all of his colleagues and friends you know none of them had a faith background at all or belief in anything after and he had you know a very distressing you know hellish narrative experience uh but then he was also saved and you know he called out to god and and uh you know jesus came and, and rescued him from that place and then you know he comes back and his whole life is transformed he can't live that same life again and so it, you know years later he ends up uh you know, leaving that profession, taking 90% pay cut, and then becoming a, uh, you know, a, he's be he becomes a minister for the rest of his life. And it, he, his wife had walked out of him and his kids had left him. So he lost everything. And still, for him, it was worth that, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say this didn't happen, this did happen. So it's a total transformation. 
uh, Dr. Mary Neal is an orthopedic spine surgeon. You know, same kind of thing. She she's a introvert. First of all, she doesn't like really opening up and, and putting herself out there. Um, and then she's a doctor. You know, all of all, and she's a practicing you know spine surgeon. So all her colleagues and all that. It's a little bit crazy for her to come out and and say that she had this heavenly experience. And yet she does. So those are kind of two things we were chasing. But as we were coming across these stories you know, it became very apparent that there's also these hellish experiences. So we, we have three people in the film who had a hellish near-death experience. So Stephen, we've seen a number of these experiences that have been shared kind of in light of what might call, one might call universalism or um, even new age. Um, how would this address the Christian audience? Uh, is it Christ honoring, for example? And how how did you select the guests in terms of their own personal belief, whether it be in Christ as their Lord and Savior, or whether it be some other motivation? Well, so, you know, in earlier on, uh, before we started making the film again, just kind of meeting these people and interviewing as many as, as I could, um, you know, I was really asking the question is, you know, is there something after and exploring it? And I was just, I just needed to know for myself. And so, um, I kind of had that open handed, I guess, and, and when I was asking those questions. And so I just, you know, I really wanted to explore people from everywhere uh, who, who had these experiences. And what I was finding that it's like, yes, there, there are cases where people have a near death experience and they don't come back and, and, and follow the Christian faith, which, um, you know, for me, it was, it was very sad, but it's, but it, I would say majority of the people though, that I, that I came in contact with, uh, did come back and and either you know if they were Christian before it just deepened their faith or um, if if they didn't have any belief at all uh, that they that they eventually found their way uh, to becoming a Christian or a Christ follower. Uh, many of the people um, who had an irritative experience and had no religious kind of context, like Howard, would would be one of them. But there's a, there's a few of them. Steve King in our film, he grew up Buddhist. Um, and he had a profound, you know, experience. He actually had a hellish experience at first. And, uh, and it's interesting that this voice, which I believe is the voice of God, um, he wasn't sure what it was, but it was coming from outside of himself in this experience, told him before he woke up, woke up, it was, uh, he said, Steve, I love you. No more Buddhism, no more drugs. And at that time, you know, he was, he was kind of in the party scene and, uh, he knew when, when he had this experience that, you know, you can have all these different kind of like preconceived notions of what the afterlife is and you can get all philosophical about, you know, like, I think it's this and I think I can do that. And his whole belief system in, in being a Buddhist was that you can, if you go to hell, which may exist, there's these different realms and you can get yourself out of it. You know, you can work yourself up out of it. And so that's, uh, there's sort of a whole belief system, which is, I think, in the new age as well, where you know, you're kind of your own savior, right? And so you have to do all this work and that continues in the afterlife. You know, you can get yourself out of, out of these situations. Well, Steve was very surprised when he died that when he's going into this hellish realm that he said there's a different set of rules. You know, he's, he's entering this space which he would call eternity and it's, you can't get, you know, the, the same rules that exist here on earth where you can maybe try to get yourself out of a situation and you may have some agency over your over you know your own life here doesn't it doesn't apply there whatever you did here in this life is is what's going to happen to you in, in the afterlife um that's that's a lot of people's stories um and so i i, I would just say that across near-death experiences uh what they report uh almost perfectly overlaps and what they interpret of what that experience was and what they kind of take home you know, may be different. Someone, you know, some not everyone, like I said, ends up Christian, um, which is unfortunate. But that's that's up to them. Every 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 person's kind of responsible for their own kind of spiritual walk and spiritual journey. Um, but what they actually experience and what they report of the experience, you know, like I say, almost perfectly overlaps. And Stephen, I'm sure along your journey, you found that so many of the people who've had these experiences talk about the difficulty of expressing what they saw that, you know, we just don't have vocabulary here on earth half the time to capture it. I'd love to hear uh, that some of the challenges you face in the sense that 
the film is visually stunning. You've got great reenactments. You've got great kind of cut scenes with voiceover trying to express what the what the guests are narrating. But um, was it challenging to try to show some of what they describe on screen? I mean, they talk about how we don't even have these colors here on Earth, and yet you want them to feel like, man, you really captured my story. What what was the difficulty of that? Oh yeah, like I, honestly, this is probably the the hardest film for me <laughs> to, as a filmmaker to to try and venture into. Because yeah, like you say, um, you know, almost everyone that I talked to, uh, you, they all said, you know, in their own way that there's there's no language on Earth, and and we again we interviewed people from all around the world, um, and some some of them, you know, English is not their first language, and they would say that even their other native language, there's no words to describe what they saw and experienced, but they'll try because you know we're getting them in a seat to talk about it. But then again, like you say, I'm, I'm challenged to, we're going to try and show some of that. So, you know, we're never going to do it justice. Uh, I don't think any, any visual effects or filmmaker uh, in the world can, can, you know, even scratch the surface, but we, you know, we try. And so we get, we get, um, we took kind of a bit of an artistic approach uh, to make it more cosmic. You know, as a kid, I always uh, looked up into the sky and was always wondering about, you know, the galaxy and, and, and the stars above us. It's just amazing that this creation and that space is just unending. Like, what is that? It's just incredible. And so we kind of base some of the imagery in, in what we're seeing in galaxies and, and uh, sort of the celestial realm, uh, you know, above us. And so, uh, that was kind of the grounding element to, to, to have something that we can kind of tangibly, you know, uh, point to. But then it was also nature, you know, that was a big part of people's experience. So we, we included a variety of landscapes from around the world. You know, we, we hired uh, drone pilots um, from many places around the world, including Norway and even Southern California here, to try and get a variety of uh, landscapes to kind of point to the nature of heaven and, ha- and how big it is. What, the, you know, the, the grandiosity of it all, Stephen, is something that is almost impossible to capture. Then there's the other element in terms of the expression of, of God himself, you know, uh, Jesus, you know, um, that, that, that is a grandiosity on a whole different level. So how do you uh, accurately portray the love of Jesus Christ and all of the other facets of God in light of well, maybe some preconceptions out there as to what he's like. How do you, how do you accurately portray him? Uh, it, it was, yeah, it was also the hardest thing to do. <laughs> um, wh- one of the things that kind of, uh, I mean, I was, I guess I, for a lot of it, I was really inspired by what people were describing. And so uh, Dale would say, and, and many of the other people who had these nerd experiences and, and, you know, met Jesus or, saw god or or you know could, could see the light of god from from heaven they would say that you know if, if they're describing christ that it's a, a man made of light that's like the equivalent of a thousand burning suns um and so it would be as they describe you know if you're standing before this man in the flesh you would be incinerated it's terrifying and yet you know it's standing before him in heaven it's like it's the most you know, beautiful, overwhelming, you know, powerful sense of love, it's unconditional love. And, and love is a word here in English that, again, words don't do justice. We use love here like, you know, I love this shirt and I love my wife. Those are two very different, you know, expressions of love. This is an unconditional love, you know, agape love. This is, this is a love that we can't uh, feel or express here on earth. Uh, it's only experienced in heaven and in God's presence. Um, it's a pure love. It's a holy love. And, um, Dale said at one point, I think in my, in my interview with him, uh, that the close, cause I was asking, you know, is there anything on earth that, that makes you think of what you saw in heaven? And, and he said, there's one thing that brings him to tears, uh, visually that makes it about as close as, as it's ever going to get here on earth to what he saw. And he says it's uh, it's actually the detonation of a nuclear bomb. If there's there, there's video footage of of these nuclear tests, and he says the first split second after before the shock wave, the first bright shining light, he says that's like a dull, you know, dumbed down version of what he saw of this man made of light. And uh, and so we were inspired by that to to kind of have some of that uh, brought into the film and and to try and invoke a sense of awe 
and wonder and even on a little bit of fear you know there's like this trembling of like the holiness of god and uh so we kind of yeah demonstrated it with light and uh and like i said galaxy imagery imagery and all that and trying to uh the the challenge as a, as a filmmaker is you know you you don't want to give everything away visually a lot of these descriptions you know it's overlaid with narrative uh and we want people to also imagine it right we're like i say we're never going to fully do it justice and so try and get you there with inspiration but we want people to kind of imagine it for themselves and we're actually recording this uh during release week for the film you guys have a big premiere uh tonight out in california steven in terms of people finding out more getting tickets so they can go see it in their uh, local theater where do we discover all this on the web yeah so people can go to angel.com slash after death and there you can you can find your your local uh theater listings we're actually in uh over 2500 theaters now across canada and the united states which for a documentary puts us at uh it's right now in, in a top five all-time release for a theater count which is incredible and uh you know angel studios are our, our distribution company um you know they saw that the value in this film and and they wanted to get it out as to as many theaters as possible so we're hoping that people show up for opening weekend um as an independent film it's it's the, mo- the most important uh time to watch is the opening weekend because that just kind of shows the theaters that there's demand and then that actually determines how long it's going to play the opening weekend will determine how long it's going to play the theaters so we hope people come out and, and watch it and like we have 14 different people who clinically die between seconds to an hour and 45 minutes in the film so it's you know and it's a variety of people from all across the world and i mean really just kind of ask the question what happens after we die and uh if you are a fan of near-death experience stories as you likely are if you watch any of randy's and my content uh you need to get out if you want to see more films like this you need to get out and show your support for this film so again that's angel.com forward slash after death to pick up tickets for your own local theater. And so film after death, our guest today, Stephen Gray. Stephen, I want to say thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank you for being long suffering and taking a, a probably a seven plus year journey to see this film finally uh, released in theaters. But I, I think it's going to be an important contribution to the, the discussion that's happening right now in culture on NDEs and the afterlife. And I have no doubt it's going to make an important impact. So Stephen, Thanks for being a guest on True Christian Dudes. We appreciate you. Oh, thanks so much for having me on.